This is the single most important mod if you own a Mazda RX-8. The water temperature gauge. In this video, I'm gonna be explaining why monitoring the temperature in these engines is so important, why I choose a water temperature gauge instead of an oil temperature gauge, and finally, how to install and set up one of these water temperature gauges in a Mazda RX-8. So first, why are these things so freaking important? These are the rotor housings in the Renesis engine, and this one in particular actually came from the car behind that you see right here when I was rebuilding it last year. So you'll notice these things are aluminum, so they're great conductors of heat. And the water passages are these holes right around here, and there's lots of them, and they run through here to keep the engine cool, especially because combustion happens right about here. So these things get really hot, and then they heat up that water, and that water keeps it cold um, as it cycles through your radiator. So you'll see right in these two grooves, there is a coolant seal jacket. There's one on this inside, and then the one on the outside uh, is missing, but it goes in this groove right here. Those keep the water sealed so that it doesn't go into the engine or seep outside and have a coolant leak. These seals will start to fail at around 220 degrees Fahrenheit. So if your water temperature gets up there, these things could blow, and then your coolant could seep into your engine, seizing it up, um, which is the worst case scenario, then you need a full rebuild, um, and there's probably a bunch of other problems wrong, with, like breaking a seal or something, or it could be seeping out and then you have a coolant leak indefinitely until you rebuild the engine as well. Either way, if you blow one of these things, you're gonna need a complete rebuild, and that's very expensive. So, what's the way of preventing that? A water temperature gauge. You're gonna know exactly how hot your water is, so you're gonna know, you know, don't let that exceed 220 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't recommend exceeding 212 degrees Fahrenheit. So um, just keep, keep an eye on those temperatures. And you might be thinking, hey, there's a water temperature gauge in the car, right? Well, I've come to learn that thing is just a dummy gauge. And here's why. I have actually brought one of these engines up in my track car up above 220 degrees. And if you look at the little dummy gauge in the car, it didn't move past halfway. So likely if that thing's moving past halfway, you've already caused engine damage. So that's why I recommend an aftermarket water temperature gauge. You're gonna know exactly the temperature of your engine. And also they look pretty cool in the interior. There's a couple reasons that I prefer a water temperature gauge over an oil temperature gauge. Now, if you can run both, then I recommend it because that's the best. I run both the oil temperature and water temperature along with an oil pressure on my track car. But if you only really want to run one um, for space or just money, um, like me, then I choose the water temperature because one, since it's going around this engine, you're getting an accurate reading of your engine temperature. Two, the coolant sensors love to fail on RX-8s. My track RX-8 coolant sensor is completely shot and the coolant light is always lit on the dash. And this one has popped up a few times even though I know the coolant reservoir is full. So I know it's starting to fail as well. And by getting a water temperature sensor, if you're monitoring the temperature and something wonky happens, then you actually know you're low on coolant. Um, and it's just a better way of determining if there's coolant in there from the position of where I put the temperature sensor in um, the RX-8. Another benefit um, of putting the water temperature sensor where I'll show you in just a second where I put it, is it's before the thermostat, so it's not gonna heat up until the thermostat opens. So you know if you've been driving for a long time and it still hasn't opened and you haven't seen that temperature spike, there's probably something stuck. So you're also monitoring your thermostat too. Um, so those are the reasons why I prefer to run a water temperature gauge over an oil temperature gauge uh, for monitoring temperature. Now that was a lot of information, so let's talk about the gauge that I choose to run. This is a Pro Sport Evo gauge. Um, I love these gauges because they are blue and red. The blue is perfect for the daytime and the red matches the, ex the interior of the RX-8 when you turn your headlights on, which is really cool. Uh, I've been running these Pro Sport Evo gauges on my track RX-8 for four years now with no issues at all. So I, you know, they're tested and they work and I like them a lot. So when you're installing these gauges, there's a couple things you're gonna need. You're gonna need a 36 millimeter um, adapter for your hoses, um, and that's just gonna go between two of your hoses. You don't have to do any cutting. I'll show you how to do that. Uh, it's really easy. 
um, and then you screw in your water temperature sensor into that, and then you can get your water temperature sensor. You'll also need some sort of gauge pod, which I'm going to design and 3D print to fit over um, the defroster vent. So it's gonna be like nice and clean, out of the way, and uh, hopefully it'll look stock. And then just some wiring, a soldering iron, or you can use adifuses. Um, I'll kind of talk about that a little bit later. So let's get started installing this gauge into my car. The first thing we have to do is jack it up and drain the coolant just out of the radiator. We don't need to drain the block because we're not going to be, you know, messing around back in there. It only has to drain out of the coolant tank and then that'll be good enough for us. So there's a little screw under, uh, underneath the radiator. Just take that out and we'll save the coolant for later. connecting those two hoses together that's screwed down I just sprayed it with some uh, WD loosen it up but that piece right there is what we're gonna take out and then just simply replace it with that water temperature adapter but before we replace it we've got to put Teflon tape on the water temperature sensor and screw it in that hole in the top so this is the temperature sensor that comes with the Pro Sport gauges and it is essentially well it is a thermistor it's a temperature varying resistor. So its resistance changes with a temperature change and then the voltage output across it is measured. And that is basically calibrated with equation and a bunch of other code and stuff. And that's converted into a temperature. So this is what has to go inside of this adapter. Um, and what we're gonna do is put Teflon tape around the threads to pre prevent leaking. There's two important things that we must consider when we do this. One, we cannot get Teflon tape on the part below the threads. That's the actual temperature sensor and that's gonna affect the conductivity of it. The second one is, this is an NTP tap or thread, so we can't over tighten this. It's supposed to be tightened to 10 inch pounds. That's not very much. So let's get going. Make sure when you put it on, it's going in the right direction. Perfect. There shouldn't be much resistance in the beginning and then it'll start to tighten. That's because it's a tapered thread. And there you go. Snug, but not too tight. So let's get this in the car. Okay, so we've got to take out that piece that I showed you earlier. Uh, I'm gonna spray it down, take off the hose clips and then the bolt, and then it should come right out. All right, got the piece out. This is kind of what it looks like. It's a little bit crusty in there. Um, but yeah, this is a piece we're going to be replacing. But before we replace it, um, the kit comes with hose clamps. Take those old clamps off. When we put on the new part, it's got to be tightened down with the hose clamps and it's got to be tight. I have blown the uh, adapter off before because it wasn't tight enough and that is not a good time. Alright, we're going to slip this piece in, sensor facing out, just like this. Throw it in between those hoses and tighten down the hose clamps. All right, so now we can work on all of the wiring. That's it for the install, pretty easy, um, besides the gauge. The wiring, a little bit more difficult. We're gonna get into it right now. All right, time to talk about wiring. So there's an easy way and a hard way to do this. The easy way is what I did in my track car and that involves doing adifuses, but it's not as clean and it kind of messes up the fuse box like a little bit. 
The hard way is cutting and splicing and soldering all the wires together. Pre-existing wires, they get power and it involves a lot of testing and a voltmeter. That's gonna be the way I'm gonna attempt on this car right now because it yields a lot cleaner look and you only have one wire running through your firewall. So, if you wanna do the easier way with Adafuses, I talk a little bit about it in my previous gauge video and I will have that linked below in the description. Getting into the wiring, I'm going to be using this black automotive wire. It is 18 gauge for all of my wiring essentially. This is important. This comes with your gauges and it tells you how to wire them. So we've got oil pressure up top and then oil temperature and water temperature on the bottom. So it tells you exactly how to do it, exactly what lighting options you want and how to hook those up. So since we're gonna be doing the blue during the day and the red at night. Um, that's just the exact wiring instructions down here. Coming off the back of the gauge is five wires and this paper will tell you where they go. So our red wire is going to be going with our white wire and those two are going to be going to 12 volt accessory. So that is 12 volts that's on when the key is in the accessory position, not all the time. The orange wire is going to be going to our headlight power. So this is 12 volts only when the headlight switch is turned on. Black is going to ground and green is going to the white wire coming from the sensor. The other black wire coming from the sensor is going to a vehicle ground, not to this one. So now we've got to get under the car kind of with our voltmeter, test out which is getting power when and then figure out what wires to cut and splice into. So I figured while it's still nice out, um, I'm going to finish up the engine bay wires. So we took a bolt out of there previously. I'm going to connect a wire from this black wire and then ground it to that bolt. And then this white wire, I'm going to connect to one of my black wires and I'm going to run it up through here, around here, right up the side here and then through that grommet down there and then into um, past the firewall and into the inside of the car. Okay, so I've just got the wire run, black ones run all the way around here. It was connected to the white from the sensor, and then it's down through there for the cable um, next to the cable that pops the hood. There's a little grommet, I just pushed it through there. Nice tight fit, so that's uh, gonna be good and uh, watertight. So now inside of the car, we've got, we've got work to do. I've just taped it to this one and pulled it through. So we've got the cable inside the car. Now we've got to do all that wiring that I mentioned earlier. So let's get going. So under the dash in that white connector, big white connector, there's a yellow and red wire that I just cut. I don't know if you can see it. That is what is 12 volt power to the headlights. It's a red wire with a yellow stripe. Okay, the 12 volt accessory wire, just take out the uh, ashtray, it's two screws and then it pops right out. And then there's going into the cigarette lighter, there is um, this plug, I just took it out. And then there's this yellow wire, cut it in half. That only provides 12 volts when the key is on accessory. So now that we've got the two wires tapped in, we're gonna run some wire all the way through, wired up according to the diagram, and then we'll be good to go. see some black wire with some white heat shrink right there that's what I did there that's for the headlights okay what I've got going on here is I've fed the white wire down through that vent so you have to drill a hole through like there's like 
two layers of plastic drill a hole right through there feed that wire down there and then i'm gonna tape all four of the black wires to that and then pull them up all the way through the vent and then with that we'll be able to connect them up to our gauge clip over there and then test continuity make sure everything's all good and then see if the gauge works I still have to 3D print the gauge pod, get that mounted up, and then rewire everything. This is just to check and then be able to drive around for the next day before I print this thing. So let's plug in the battery, fill it up with coolant, plug this into the gauge, and then see if our gauges work. Let's see if it works. blinker on. Alright, gotta adjust my seat. See right there, it turned on. Give her a nice start up. So this is why you need a water temperature gauge. See right there, 25, 206. And right there, needle didn't move. But, yeah, so yeah, everything's working. Um, that's gonna get cleaned up. Everything's working, 205, reading the temperature, water temperature good, and then when the lights go on, it goes to red. So it's good, just how I wanted it. Now I'm going to 3D design and 3D print a gauge pod to hold this, and then rewire it all, and then actually use heat shrink and all, do it right, and then I'll show you the final result.